you would stand. Want to go ahead and pray, please. Pray first. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for all that you do for us, Lord. We're grateful for your mercy and your grace that you show us every day. Lord, we're grateful that we live in a country where we're able to meet and to discuss the issues of our county. Lord, we ask that you would be here with us today. We ask that you would be with our servant leaders today, that you would touch them, that you would bless them and bless their families. Lord, we ask that you would give them wisdom as they make decisions that, uh, that affect the county. Lord, we just ask that you would be with us all. Lord, so you would bless our country and uh, the state of Indiana and our county. In your name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, one nation, Please. Scott. Here. Connor. Here. Hicks. Here. Warbach. Here. Bowling. Here. Lemming. Here. Middlesbrough. Here. President of the County Board. Next item this evening will be the auditor's report. Unlike Jim, <laughs> I don't have. So until you guys request. What you want to see, I will continue to just provide the general fund balance and the health insurance balance. Yeah, so at your table this evening, you should have the county general fund comparison monthly report as the auditor stated. You can see, you can see the, this, the ending balance of December the 22nd. Also at your table, you have the health insurance the December, well, that's the November, right? I gave you an updated one. You did. December balance as well. And the other report that I asked the auditor to prepare for us this evening is the financial report by fund. Should have that as well. Again, if there's any other forms or information that the members would like to see, uh, let myself or Angie know. And we'll pile together. Also, at your table this evening, you'll have the HR report. Again, uh, the Grant Blackford Mental Health, uh, their report uh, as well, it's in your packet. Questions, comments? Moving on, have the Sheriff's Commissary report as well, uh, ending December 31st, 2022, in your packets. Mm -hmm. See, I'll find you. The next one. Okay. Is there any other questions or comments for the auditor? Thank you. Uh, before we get started with new business, uh, there's a couple items I'd like to add. A1 a committee recommendation for the county attorney. And then item H, highway community crossing matching grant. So the first item under new business is the election of county officers. That'd be the president and vice president. At this time, I'll open the floor for the nominations um, for the president. President, I will nominate you, Shane Middlesworth, uh, to serve again as our president. Second. Are there any further nominations? Mr. 
Chairman, I move that the uh, Secretary cast a unanimous ballot for the single nomination. No further nomination. The no nominations are closed. I do a roll call then, Mike. We don't need to. Is that correct, Mr. Collins? I've always seen it as taking a always vote. I don't think it'd be. I don't think it's incorrect, but I think at this time the nominations are closed. Uh, Shane Millsworth for president. At this time, do the roll call. Scott. Aye. Connor. Aye. Hicks. Yes. Warbach. Aye. Bowling. Aye. Fleming. Aye. Middlesworth. Abstain. Motion carries. Has to be majority. Uh, the nominations are now in order for the office of vice president. Are there any nominations? Make a motion to uh, nominate Mark Fleming as a vice president. Second. I have a motion and a second. Are there any further nominations? Nominations are closed. Okay, roll call, please. Scott. Aye. Connor. Aye. Hicks. Aye. Warbach. Aye. Holding. Aye. Lemming. Upstanding. Middlesworth. Yes. Motion carries. Your 2023 president, vice president is Shane Middlesworth and Mark Lemming. Thank you for that word of confidence. Thank you, sir. So the next item under new business is a committee recommendation for a county attorney. <coughs> Many of you may not be aware, but our county attorney, Phil Stevenson, uh, gave notice back in December that he was retiring. He's served the county for 20 years. He's done a fantastic job. We advertised the position, created a committee to investigate hiring a new attorney. We received uh, several applicants and the committee met and had some interviews. And at this time, the committee does have a recommendation. And at your table this evening is, a, is the contract for the county attorney's position. The county committee would like to nominate Nathan Meeks. As the county attorney. Uh, the committee comprised myself, Mr. Lemming, Mr. Warbuck, as well as the auditor. The committee would like to add any further comments. Uh, I have heard some talk that there were uh, there was some discussion about possibly providing health insurance for the county attorney. That is not part of the agreement. That's not part of the agreement. Thank you. The agreement is almost identical to uh, Mr. Stevenson's agreement. However, uh, it's in writing now. So, whereas before uh, all those years, there was no contract, believe it or not. So there is some writing and this is public information. So. Anybody would like to go to the auditor's office and obtain a copy? One of us spells out the agreement for employment, contractual service piece. I think you're after the agreement. Committee and Mr. Meeks. Does anyone have any questions from the members? There's no questions, comments. I'd entertain a motion. Mr. President, I'll make a motion to accept the uh, nomination as presented. Second. I have a motion from <clears throat> Mr. Lemming, a second from Mr. Warbach 
to approve the hiring of Mr. Meeks, the county attorney. Any other questions or comments from the members? I will only comment that I feel I need to abstain from the vote. It's not anything against Nathan, but I understand one of my law partners was one of the applicants. So that I will abstain from the vote. Members uh, wanted to, I guess we could uh, we'd like to introduce Mr. Meeks. That's something you'd like to entertain or? Or he's here. You want to come up to the podium and just introduce yourself? Amen. Appreciate the opportunity to be here and appreciate the recommendation of the committee. So, any questions that you have, try to answer them. How do you feel about your neighbors? <laughs> I'm settling into Jones Okay. <laughs> Good to have you. Thank you, Mike. There's no questions, comments. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thanks, neighbor. Any public input? This time would be roll call. Gosh. Aye. Connor. Abstain. Six. Yes. Verbach. Aye. Bowling. Aye. Lemming. Aye. Middlesworth. Yes. Motion carries. For the agreement. At this time, Mr. Meeks, if you want to take a seat up here by Angie, you want to welcome to. That's the hot seat now, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, new business item B correctional service, Melissa Stevenson, with the transfer of appropriation within the adult probation admin fund. And this is the one that uh, she wasn't going to be present. She would have liked to uh, put it off to the next meeting, but I said that the amount we can suspend the rules and go ahead and approve the transfer. It's something that has to take place, uh, something that's routine. So the motion would be to suspend the rules, approve the transfer. It's a thousand dollars from overtime to salaries. Within uh, the adult probation user fee fund, which is fund number two thousand. Any questions or comments? There are not entertain a motion. Mr. President, I move as, a per, uh, as presented. Second. I have a motion for Mr. Scott, a second for Mr. Warbrock to suspend the rules and approve the transfer of $1,000. Well, move. Connor, sorry, I'm back up here. I have a motion for Mr. Scott, a second from Mr. Connor to suspend the rules. Member comment? Public input? Roll call, please. Scott? Aye. Connor? Aye. Hicks? Yes. Warbach? Aye. Bowling? Yes. Lemming? Aye. Middlesworth? Yes. Rules are suspended. Is there a motion to approve the thousand dollar transfer from overtime to salaries? So moved. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Connor, a second from Mr. Lemming to approve the following transfers within the adult probation user fee fund a thousand dollars from overtime to salaries. Any other questions or comments from the members? Public input. Roll call, please. Scott? Aye. Connor? Aye. Hicks? Yes. Warbach? Aye. Bowling? Yes. Lemmy? Aye. Middlesworth? Yes. Motion carries. Next item under new business item C, County Health Department, uh, Dr. David Moore, additional appropriations uh, regarding COVID testing grant fund. 
also uh, an additional appropriation within the health fund and a salary ordinance amendment in the local health department trust uh, account fund. Good evening. I'm going to present these requests on Dr. Moore's behalf this evening. That's okay. That's perfectly fine. So our first request, the health department is part of the emergency management, emergency support function team. And they've been assigned a talk group for when, when there's an emergency event. And to participate in this talk group, we need these 800 megahertz radios. <laughs> so I'm requesting that we be allowed to use some of the carryover money that's remaining, remaining from the testing grant. Um, the testing is now finished. The money that's that's remaining can be used for any health department need. I'm requesting seven thousand three hundred dollars to purchase three of these radios. The answer the questions that I can. Are there any questions or comments from the members regarding this request? There is one, I believe, that the advertisement. Yeah, the advertisement for the additional appropriation was. Well, it was for 7,000, but 7,300. So I'll have to re-advertise. So the motion uh, to approve this would be the, the pending advertisement correctly. That's Obviously, you know, it's advertised for seven. How many estimates you get for this? Actually, I just, um, under the advisement of the person that's going to train us on how to use the radios, purchased the same thing that emergency management has already purchased. So that everybody in the ESF eight is using the same radio, it, it alleviates a lot of confusion and allows the company to program them all the same at the same time. Who, who gets the radios? These three would be for the health department. They're one of the the, the ESF eight teams, and have been assigned a talk group. So so like. Every member of the emergency support function team will have to read. Every member does, except the health department. No, they would stay here. Well, whoever's involved in the disaster. A, a good example of where they would. So basically, these are going to sit on the shelf unless we have a disaster. To some extent, yes. A perfect example of what they would be used for um, legislation back in July determined that if there's a, a disaster in Grant County, the health department would be responsible for family reunification. Radios would just be helpful when you're trying to match children with their parents and, and reconnect families in a disaster type situation. Am I saying it's going to happen? No. Am, am I being told that we need to use the funds we've been provided to be prepared? Yes would allow us to do that. I had a little bit of conversation with yourself and uh, part of what was explained to me is that the, you don't know who should take the radios home. If based, one, on, based on what emergency is going to take place. Correct. If, um, if it's a, a, a spill, a chemical spill, then it needs to be our environmentalists that have the radios. If it's a reunification, it's going to have to be our entire team working together on that one. If it's trying to hold a massive immunization clinic, then our nurses would have some of the radios. So it really depends on the event as to who the radios would be in the hands of. We'll all be trained to use them. They'll be kept here in one base and tested on a regular basis. And we'll participate in the exercises that the emergency management puts together. This is grant fund dollars from COVID testing from the COVID testing grant. There, there are eighty four thousand dollars remaining in that fund, and the health department is to use it to um, meet public health needs with the council's approval. Is there going to be a contract every three years or something? You got to update these things. No, it's my understanding. Once we purchase them and they're programmed, and the programming is part of the quote there. That that's it. Maybe this is a silly question, but why will cell phones do the job? Because with cell phones, when you're trying to reunite 100 people to their family members with these radios, Mr. Jackson can tune in exactly which members of the ESF 8 team are communicating. 
and that's the only people that hear. Where if I have to stop and try to do a um, a, a group phone conversation that consumes a lot of time, <clears throat> I'm following the advice of bigger than me that these radios will be a much better option. Cell towers go down in disasters. I am told that these radios will continue to work. And then when COVID then it can be used for this non COVID purpose. Yes, absolutely. Any public health matter that the council deems the money necessary for. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the members? There are none. I entertain a motion. Second. Second. I have a motion for Mr. Hicks, a second for Mr. Scott to approve pending advertisement mm -hmm. correctly. $7,300 in the equipment line item, which is in the fund 8908 COVID testing mm -hmm. fund. Is everyone clear on that? Any other questions or comments from the members? Public input? Roll call, please. Scott? Aye. Connor? Aye. Hicks? Yes. Warbach? Aye. Foley? Yes. Fleming? Aye. Middlesbrough? Yes. Motion carries. On. Okay, so my next request, um, we came to council last year in August and requested some overtime money to hold evening clinics and or Saturday clinics for back to school vaccinations. And we would like to continue that. Unfortunately, it was after budget season, so we didn't get it in our 2023 budget request. We would like to continue that um, through this year. We got a Pretty good response. A lot of working parents were able to come in on a Saturday morning or a Thursday evening and get their child's vaccinations. Um, we're not going to start offering it until spring, maybe two, like one night a week and one Saturday until July and August. And then we would do two weeknights a month and two Saturdays a month until after school started. Then it would be based on need. Um, we would need two nurses on hand to be able to do it. We would use one part time nurse out of our part time grant funds, and then this overtime would be to pay our salaried nurse for overtime to come in and do it. Request is for an additional appropriation within 1159 the general fund overtime in the amount of 5,000, FICA in the amount of $383, and then a purse in the amount of $710. Can you take this money out of the with money? I could if you would rather. I can absolutely do that. We, we have a very large amount in our, in our 1159 fund from COVID reimbursement monies. That was probably $170,000. My thought was that we would use the COVID vaccine reimbursement monies to continue to fund a vaccine clinic, but I will gladly pay it out of whatever fund you prefer. Well, the issue being that if anything is going to come out of general health fund, that negatively affects the general fund by that by that same amount. So if the money can come somewhere else, because the health fund is one of the funds that goes in. So when we prepare our budgets, so Q Bridge okay. goes into there as well. So okay, that's you. We can take it out of there if you prefer. Do I need to resubmit the request? You have to. I'm have have to re-advertise. Don't want to have any clinics until. April, so you won't so you might have to come back. Yeah, you should have to advertise it. That's got about it. Come back again. We're not that bad. No, You're here no. most meetings. No. Any last no. speaker? <laughs> well, you did pretty good. Well, thank you. You should feel my heartbreak. <laughs> okay, so we're advertising that out of different than having to have. Is that the thing we should do? Okay, the testing grant fund. I think that's a more appropriate time to bring in. That's a good suggestion, Joe. Okay, clear on that end. Yep. Okay. 
Okay, third request. When we came to the council and presented our budget, we requested a full time nursing position out of the grant um, 8201 of 1206. I apologize, 1206. It's a $30,000 annual grant. We asked the council to make that a full time position and pick up the cost difference, and that was declined and made a part time position. In the process of that, I failed to request that this nurse who's been working for us for several years now receive the same pay increase that, that the other nurses received. So I would just like to increase her salary from her pay scale from 22 an hour to 20 to 10. Budget amount stays the same. Yes. Make a motion to approve the request. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Connor, a second from Mr. Scott to amend the salary limits to reflect the hourly rate change from $22 to $23.10 in the ILHDT a grant line item. Any other questions or comments from the members? How did that get overlooked in the budget for when, when when they declined making it a full time position, it just didn't occur to me to say, well, can you at least give her the pay increase that everybody else is getting? Because it's under part time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, uh, any, any other comments or questions from members? Public input. Roll call, please. Scott. Aye. Connor. Aye. <laughs> Uh, Aye. Right. Polling. Yeah. Lemmings. All right. Middle Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. See you next. Next item under new business item D County Prosecutor Scott Hunt Salary Ordinance Amendment the General Fund. I right, thank you all for uh, coming to speak. I've only been office been office for 18 days, but one of the things that as, as I take office, start this new position is I feel a great responsibility for the taxpayers of this county. Um, the tax dollars that are allocated to my office don't take that responsibility responsibility life. It is hard earned money uh, that, that people pay. Uh, and so I'm very, very cautious and do not like the idea of spending more money. Uh, what I'm asking tonight, that the budget that was passed for this year included in it a salary for victims advocate support clerk. And the trust was given to, to me to fill that position. Well, uh, as I have considered my office and looked at the needs of the office, I would say it's irresponsible for me to fill that position. Um, we simply don't need that position in our office. What our office needs, what the prosecutor's office needs, is to get and keep good deputy prosecuting attorneys. And to do that, uh, have to be able to pay them well um, and to make their pay competitive. What I'm asking tonight is not to create a new position. Um, and actually, what I am doing is asking you to remove a position from my budget, which in turn uh, would give back a benefits package. I'm not asking to fill um, the victim's advocate support clerk, and I'm not asking you to create a different position within my department. Uh, what I am asking you to do is to uh, to make uh, the deputy prosecutor's salaries commensurate with their their talents, uh, as well as to make it competitive with the other counties in Grant County. And I have a list of, of starting pay and, and advertised pay for uh, different counties and prosecutors and what they are expecting. So what I'm asking, and, and I have been providing to you, it's a, a spreadsheet of current prosecutor salaries uh, comparison. And what I'm asking uh, council to do is to reallocate um, that $31,886, I'm asking you to reallocate only $28,795 to uh, five of the deputy prosecuting 
positions. The first being vacant, I'm asking you to, uh, which was at one time held by Jared Ibe, um, I'm asking you to increase that by $9,578 to make that $70,000. I'm asking you to increase uh, Jamie Moore's salary by $3,220 uh, to make his salary then $75,000. I'm asking you to increase the vacant position uh, uh, by $10,000 to make that $70,000. I'm asking you to increase Happy Stoffel's position by $997 to make her salary $66,000. I'm asking you to increase Jack Johnson's salary uh, by $5,000 to make his salary $65,000, which would leave a balance of uh, $31,000. There's $3,091 that I would propose if you were just returned to the general fund. So what I'm, what I am in essence asking is you to reallocate that money to the areas that I have identified in my office that need that money. It will. Bottom line is it will actually decrease the prosecutor's office uh, salary expenditure by $3,000 and a uh, benefits package. And I, my goal in doing that is to be able to offer um, experienced attorneys a position with pay that would be, it would still be on the lower end of what is being um, offered throughout our state for deputy prosecuting attorneys. Uh, with the same level of experience, but I'm trying to make those salaries uh, competitive. And so by doing this, it would make us uh, a little bit more competitive with the rest of the state. So that, that is that is my request. Any questions or comments from the members regarding this request? Um, a few comments. Um, I support this. Uh, Scott was kind enough to talk to me about the specifics of this and he's presented it very well tonight and i want to repeat what he's saying he wants to do more with less this is what we ask our department heads to do i also want to say that i support this even though it hurts me we're at my firm law firm trying to recruit people to come to marion to work as attorneys this is going to make it tougher on us to get people to come because it competes with us to get new attorneys and keep attorneys in town. But it's the right thing to do. Because if you think crime's bad now, if you think that people are being victimized now, imagine if we don't have and keep good prosecuting attorneys because people are going to be back on the street that ought not to be. So I, I see nothing but good coming from this. Uh, but Scott, please quit hiring people away from us. <laughs> Tell them we're a better place to work, happier, <laughs> better looking attorneys. I don't care what you tell them, but in all seriousness, this is something that's, I think, a no brainer to support. This package is about 20000 Is that right? So we're down almost. Well, 20. you got per. Well, I guess you have some per. Just yeah, well, it's 21. This, yeah, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, I'm um, maybe tell them true because if that's not true, I want to know now because that may change my budget. No. <laughs> I know your association of partners, and they're probably much happier where they are right now. Um, but that being said, I, I have not approached anybody because I didn't feel right to say, to, to offer them and say, hey, I would love you to come and work for me. I'll try to get you this. Um, I, I think that would be disingenuous. Of me. So I have been waiting to approach people. Um, I, I will also advertise this on the Indiana Prosecuting Attorney Council's website. Um, but I, I wanted the number first. I, I don't want to get the cart before the horse. So I want to come here and get your approval before I start advertising those numbers rather than asking somebody to come in the hopes or, or on an empty promise. So, are you aware that the um, the openings and the ones that you put numbers next to um, 
the females are the lowest paid? Uh, I, I was I was not aware of that, um, but um, <laughs> just I'm just true. because I'm so, probably going to hear that, that. that. Well, what what I will tell you is that's not actually true. The lowest paid will be a male. Yes. Um, and it is it experience. Um, it is it's experience. It's also the type of cases. So. Um, and I'm not trying to overburden the council next year when I present my budget. Uh, I'm not going to have necessarily names next to these positions. I'm going to have what they do. And so, you know, you look at Jamie Moore. Um, she is. I think the most. Experienced trial lawyer we have. Uh, definitely of the prosecuting attorney or of the deputy prosecutors. Um, and so that's why I, I want his half salary. Uh, at the area it is. I mean, I'm sure Mr. Moore could, uh, I, I guarantee you he could find work and make a whole lot more money if he were to move out of the county. I don't want that. Um, the two other positions that I'm putting in $70,000 are major felony uh, positions. So they would be doing murders, they would be doing rapes, they would be doing burglaries, um, aggravated batteries, uh, drug dealing. So those are the type of positions that are major felonies, and I'm looking to fill those positions. So, so no, and, and it's not to preclude any of the females in my office. And, and as a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Lemming, one of the people I, I have in mind to speak to is, is a female for one of these positions. Yeah, so make you aware. I, I, because I, I know that someone's going to make me aware. I, I understand, and um, you know that's something I do need to be aware of. Uh, so I do appreciate that. So. Scott, I appreciate you coming and doing exactly what we want. Because we do look over your new office, looking it over and seeing what you want to do with it. You were elected from maybe run for re election based on how you do this. So I applaud your efforts. I appreciate you coming and explaining that to me ahead of time. I, I think it's a good idea if you're eliminating the position to use it for the people office. So, thank you. Questions or comments from the members? Or not, I'd entertain a motion. Make the motion to approve the request. Second. I heard Mr. Warbach first. I have a motion from Mr. Connor, a second from Mr. Warbach to Amend the salary ordinance to reflect this schedule. And I'll just go through and highlight it. Uh, the deputy prosecutor, a $9,578 change. Another deputy pro prosecutor position, a $3,220 change. Another deputy prosecutor position, a $10,000 change. Another deputy prosecutor uh, position. $997 change and a deputy prosecutor with a full time juvenile and suit three of work, $5,000 salary change, eliminating the, the victims advocate support book. Yes, sir. That's correct. Right. So, all clear, Angie, Stacy. Any other questions or comments from the members? Uh, public input? A roll call, please. Scott? Aye. Conan? Aye. Brooks? Yes. Warbach? Aye. Foley? Yes. Lemming? Aye. Middlesbrough? Yes. Yes. <laughs> The next item under new business item E area plan commission Ryan Malone additional appropriations in the general fund. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm calling for Ryan tonight. Uh, I'm calling for the area plan uh, <coughs> area plan commission uh, president. Um, in our November meeting, we uh, took a vote to ask for additional appropriations to hire an attorney to review to review a recently enacted solar ordinance. There are concerns that some of the areas of the ordinance may be improper. Also, part of this motion calls out for a review of conduct of APC members related to conflict of interest. This time, I'm going to have Randy Atkins, who is your APC appointment, uh, to explain uh, why we feel 
uh, need for independent review, and I will stay live for any questions or concerns. Yeah, the APC um, did recognize that there's an area of concern in the ordinance that doesn't uh, align with Indiana code, and as a result, they they passed the motion to have the uh, the ordinance reviewed. Um, Al Persinger uh, suggested or estimated uh, about a six thousand dollar cost to have that ordinance reviewed. He um, he suggested it possibly be an outside attorney in order to um, you know somebody who specializes in zoning law in order to get a better clarification. There um, there's a, a considerable number of changes um, in the ordinance in regard to decisions that are being made. At, um, such as how oh, land usage um, application uh, fees, those sort of things that you know we'd like to have somebody that really specializes in that to be able to review it and, and make sure that we have an ordinance that uh, is good to go. Any questions or comments from the members? I have quite a few questions. I think. Uh, Mr. Atkins, uh, this is to challenge the solar ordinance, is it not? No, it is to make sure that the solar ordinance is in alignment with the Indiana Code. Okay, let's. I don't have evasion here. This is all about the solar ordinance, is it not? What the APC passed was to have the solar ordinance reviews to make sure that it aligns with the Indiana Code. No other ordinance, just the solar ordinance. That's the only one we're talking about. That'd be correct. And isn't it true that you've been a very vocal opponent to the solar ordinance and solar in Grant County? I have been involved in um, the solar uh, ordinance development, not only as a citizen, but also, you know, as an APC representative for you guys here most recently. So, yes, I, I have been involved. I do have concerns. I believe this is one of the most significant uh, issues that Grant County has faced in quite some time. And I think it's very important that we get it, that we get it correct. I've come to uh, understand the ordinance uh, development procedure in regard to alignment with the comprehensive plan, you know, as well as um, uh, the local tolerance uh, considering those. And it would be my hope that, um, you know, we can honor the rights of land property owners, as well as those who may be impacted by, you know, land property owners who have decisions to make in regard to whether they want to uh, entertain solar or not. Isn't it true that the sole ordinance that you're wanting to have reviewed and potentially challenged was enacted with assistance of council that we already paid for? I I think that is correct. I don't know that because I didn't have knowledge as to who the commissioners yeah. pretty much controlled that ordinance. So I I don't know that there was any reports back to the APC in regard to how the commissioners have that. The commissioners did not really provide any amendments back to the APC, which is my understanding, which is what the process would have been. What you're asking is for county taxpayers to pay for another legal opinion on this and potentially uh, litigation back against us. You're asking us to put ourselves under a microscope with our money and potentially fund what could be and probably should be a private right of action by citizens like yourself that may have concerns, yes or no? I don't think I agree with that. I think it would be important that um, in order to protect the county from any lawsuits that may come about, that we make sure that the ordinance aligns with the Indiana Code. Well, I understand that you and others have consulted with private counsel about bringing your own private view, which you can do, you're free to do, and I respect that, and potentially challenge with litigation the way that that ordinance was passed and that you were told that you couldn't get a free attorney and it would cost you up to six thousand dollars do it yourself and that's why you're coming to ask the taxpayers to pay for this review rather than paying for it yourself or some private citizen paying for that review and potential challenge mr Connor, i don't know where you're getting your information but i think you're you're really leading into some things that that are not accurate did i say something that's untrue mr atkins i did not. you not get that 
consultation and advice? I did not. I have not had any contacts with any lawyer in regards to the solar ordinance. Are you in, aware of anybody else in the group that wants to do this who got that? Who looked into that, getting a private attorney? You know, there, for it privately? there have been some decisions, uh, or not decisions, there's been some discussion within the public in regard to uh, whether they want to, in my, uh, what my recommendation has been as a member of the APC and a representative of this group, is that we, we follow the proper procedure, which would be to offer an amendment back to the commissioners. Why don't you get the review yourself as a private citizen and pay for it? Why would I do that? Why wouldn't you? Okay. I'm asking the I questions. The I'm asking for an answer. Yeah, I don't have the money to do that. Let me interject here this evening. Um, they're here on behalf of the APC. Was the APC's vote the unanimous to? Uh, no, there was uh, nine in favor, one against, and one abstention. So this is coming from the APC as a group. Well, that's interesting. That would come from you rather than the gentleman at the podium. But I thought we shared that. Are you aware that this could be done by private citizens rather than, I mean, asking us to pay ourselves under the microscope and potentially be sued? I don't know. I have the knowledge to respond to that. Wouldn't that be a conflict of interest? I know that's one of the concerns that that you've had about conflicts of interest and things not being done according to oil. Isn't it a conflict of interest for us to pay to have ourselves put under a microscope and potentially sued? How am I to justify that with taxpayers? I guess that would be a decision you guys would have to make. Right. Thank you. Questions or comments? I know Mr. Hicks also serves on the Area Planning Commission. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, currently, and council, legal council. Uh, I'll first thing here is indicate he wants to leave. He will hang on and stay on or advise us until we advertise and select a new attorney to represent us. Well, that raises another question. Why not defer this and have a new new council give you opinions on that rather than get six thousand dollars from the taxpayers to do it now? What's the hurry? I think that's been a consideration. I am not knowledgeable enough to know what the, the twelve thousand dollars that you guys have typically appropriated, you know, for legal services to the APC. I don't know what shortfalls may occur if, as if we were to use that money. To review the ordinance. Our current allotment amount is basically to pay for Kyle or whoever that holds that position. Um, yes, we could possibly within our interview process see their due diligence. Is one consideration. One thing is that there was a of interest, for lack of better words, from Kyle representing us and the county commissioners. Uh, hindsight, that probably. Maybe it wasn't the best choice back when it was selected a couple of years back. Um, but there was some thought at that time, in my opinion, or remembering, is that uh, maybe we could work together in processing ordinances or business. Uh, but apparently that may not have been the best decision back then on that selection. Yes, yeah, so if we have somebody else that may, if money's not appropriated and we want to pursue that as a group, with the funds we have, it may have to be through that whoever we hire. And I agree, there was discussion or that came up on our board meeting that yes, what happens if we have that that member's no longer on the on the board mission? Uh, if we got money from the outside, you know, you know, we'll, we'll fund it. Um, and through the advice of Kyle, is what they can donate money, but that doesn't mean it's going to get appropriated for you. Outside people, like you mentioned, can outside action. I hope you understand. I have no problem with putting government under the microscope. <laughs> Amen. That's right. my political bent. I'm just talking about how it's paid for. That's all. I can see why a majority of the board voted to get it reviewed, but it's just the method of paying for it. I just I don't agree with it. And I think I'm sorry. I don't mean this in a pejorative way, but I think this is crazy to ask us to. 
to pay for this. I mean, can you imagine if I got in a school board situation, the same thing was done that the, you know, the, the uh, taxpayers in a school district were asked to pay for outside counsel to come in and second guess what the board did. Yeah, we'll pay for that. We want to be looked at. We want to be questioned. You know, maybe this was all done right. I'll bet it was all done right, but I had no problem looking at it. I do have a problem with asking my constituents to pay for it out of taxpayer dollars. Mr. Connor, let me ask you something. Isn't it a conflict? Kyle was their lawyer and the commissioner's lawyer. Shouldn't Kyle excuse himself? That's for Kyle. It's high. My thing is, if that's a conflict, you should pay for it because shouldn't that fall back on us? Why, why would it fall on us? Because Kyle was the attorney. Well, if you're, if you're the attorney and you're telling me it's his right to, he should have excused himself. Well, if he's the, why I get this whole ordinance came down, they had one ordinance, the commissioner went back and changed it all. Correct me if I'm wrong. But if Kyle's the lawyer for both sides, shouldn't somebody, the commissioners, or somebody said, Kyle, you can't do this? I don't think it's necessarily both sides. And besides, that's all disclosed in accordance with state law. That's absolutely out in the open, all of that. Just like it's out in the open that Kyle's in my firm with me, and I never vote on things like pay increases for when Phil Stevenson was here. That's not the issue. Questions or comments from the members? So why is the attorney, why, why is our APC or Air, uh, yeah, Area Planning Commission not able to provide legal service for this? Our budget line item budget is like the 12,000 for the year and that would be the position that Kyle currently holds or held. That's what we pay that person to represent us, not only at the meetings, but anything that needs to be done out of the office when they file a, a court orders for demolition, <clears throat> any actions that we have to do with court filings, uh, that comes out of that's what they, that position gets paid to do that. Is a lawsuit being considered? The APC has never talked about litigation. What we are, what we are, this is my perspective. Okay, I, I, it, it bothers me that I'm speaking for the entire APC. So whatever I'm going to share with you is my personal views as an APC member. Okay, I'm sorry the APC isn't here to speak. You know, and you're asking us questions that probably would require some discussion in order to get a total consensus from the APC. Um, as I understand it, the amendment process would be the next step to send an amendment back to the commissioners. The commissioners have been made aware of our concerns, and we were hoping that you know the, the amendment process would begin there based on my participation in all of it, and that hasn't happened. I can't speak for why, but I think that knowing or having someone's opinion, a legal attorney's opinion about whether it is in alignment with the Indiana Code, would sure encourage the APC to offer an amendment to the, to the commissioners. I think that, based on the general discussion, I believe that would be um, our move. Translation, you get an opinion from somebody that we pay for it says, you didn't do it right. If you're holding a gun to the commissioner's head saying, either change it or we'll bring litigation to force your hand. That's what would happen. Yes. I don't believe there's anybody that's been as worth that I have heard on the APC for litigation. I, I, I would hope that our goal would be to, to reach a compromise and resolve this. But if no compromise, are you aware of anything else other than a lawsuit? Force the issue? I can't speak for you're not an attorney, so you don't know, right? Yeah, you're I mean, it would be up to this body to appropriate additional funds for litigation. And that would be crazier yet. Yeah, I mean, that will you please finance a lawyer to sue us? Yeah, I'm here. Somebody come sue me now. 
guess how I see it is the APC voted to seek additional appropriations, the $6,000. I think everybody here, you don't want to see uh, the commissioners and the council and the members, you know, litigating each other over taxpayer dollars and we're wasting taxpayer dollars. I think there is some merit in uh, using the funds to make sure the ordinance uh, complies to state statute. Uh, obviously, there was some conflict uh, when it was drafted uh, with the APC's attorney being the same as the commissioners. So I would support the 6,000 uh, as long as it the scope of work was to review the ordinance, did it follow state statute, what didn't go from there. Absolutely, that's our request. If I can speak to you. Go ahead, Mr. Lerard. I have difficulty following this whole argument because I believe what we're talking about is we either want solar or we don't want solar, and we're not hitting the argument head on. We're going about it this way or that way or fighting it some other way because we can't win it the way we want it head on. I wish we could come down to a vote. We're either in favor of solar or not in favor of solar. And as I understand, the commissioners are supposed to do this, but I, I this is difficult for me. I got farmers here who don't want it, and there are other farmers who do want it. And the old politician said, I'm in favor of the farmers. Well, in this case, this is a very difficult issue. We need to fund, we have to do so much solar by a certain year. That, that's got to come from somewhere. I don't know the solution. I don't know the solution here. I don't like hearing arguments that aren't head on. That's what we're down to. Thank you. I wish I understood it better. Questions or comments from the members? I don't know. Where do we go from here? I mean, I, I, that seems to be the biggest question at, at this point. I mean, I, I have concern. I don't know that. I don't know that APC can. Grant you a guarantee. That's possible. And I have concerns that we're going to pay somebody that is going to ultimately may turn around and sue us. I have big concerns about that. But I also feel like that I have limited knowledge on what's going on right now. It seems to be a lot of different parties that's involved in this. Everybody going different directions with their own agendas. And I don't know where we're at right now. The other side of that too is I mean, we could be sued either way. <clears throat> Both sides. I mean, this kind of is a, a little bit of an insurance guarantee. Well, maybe. I mean, well, are we? I don't know. I mean, are we? Are we better to pay money to, to an attorney to represent us in the lawsuit, or are we better to pay the six thousand dollars of taxpayers' money to sue us? I mean, I think that would be up to the APC to decide. You know, do you hire someone at the twelve thousand dollar rate to? Not uh, great, twelve thousand dollar in the budgeted item to represent the APC and tackle this maybe, or is there whoever they hire maybe will have the expertise of the state statute side and you need to go out and seek additional counsel. I think that's up to the APC to decide right? what's on the table though. I think we have to see the state statute. I mean, if you put it order like you said. I make there's sure. no reason though why they couldn't wait if they're getting a new attorney. It yeah. doesn't have this. What I think is a sorry to use the word trumped, but trumped up uh, allegation of conflict of interest. Have the new attorney look at it. I've heard nothing that says they can't wait to do it then within their existing budget. What's the hurry to get six thousand additional dollars to pay for it now? I've heard nothing, and, and you know all I've heard is I don't know if there's any hurry. Translation: There is none. As an APC member, I guess my position on that, I would have no problem using the 12,000 as you guys have already granted us for that. But yet I, I, I become concerned in the event that we would need legal assistance down the road. Um, would it be, could we entertain the council to help support any additional needs that we may have? I think that's more reasonable. Yes. To, let's cross that bridge when we get to it. Yes. And again, I can't emphasize enough. I got no problem with looking at this. Nobody wants an ordinance passed if it's not legally appropriate. Absolutely. We are on the same exact page on that. 
it's just how to pay for it. So, you know, if, if your new attorney says uh, you didn't do it right, then go back and do it right. And if you can't do that, if there's a longer head, then we'll decide what to do then and how to pay for it. That would be my take on it. That's the reasonable compromise. I think that we can, we all ought to be able to agree to. So I'm hearing that if if we if the APC choose will or they decide it's their decision, I mean it'll be something we'll probably bring up in February. <laughs> if if they choose to you know proceed and to use that twelve thousand, and if we need funds down the road, you guys would entertain us coming back and requesting some. Is that what I'm hearing? I think I could always say I always entertain anything. <laughs> Not guaranteeing how I'll go, but I sure will listen. Sure, Absolutely. appreciate that. That's all we can ask. Amen. Any other questions or comments for the members? Do we need to have an agreement or what's your recommendation? Well, they've come with a request, so my advice would either be to make a motion to deny the request or make a motion to accept the request. It sounds like uh, the council's leaning towards denying the request with the no I don't think I don't, think, they just, I don't think you can have a negative motion. Yeah, I we, think or we just make a motion to table it. Table it. You could do that. Yeah. Well, nobody makes a motion and just dies for lack of value. Right. Then they can just come back. And they don't come back. Yeah. Right. So I don't have to do anything. Yeah. Right. That's my thoughts. I, I, I would suggest you ask for a motion <clears throat> if there's a motion to there's no motion. Is there a motion to, to approve the additional appropriation? No motion. Thank you for your time. Considering the, the, the issue at hand, I would invite any of you to attend the APC meetings in order to catch up with yes. what we're dealing with. It's not an easy situation that we're faced with. I mean, this this is one of the the most significant situations we've had in Grand County. So please, please come. Thank you, gentlemen. And thank, thank you for letting me grill you. Next thank you for letting me grill you. I'm a I'm retired school administrator. I've got thicker skin than you can ever. Ah, ah, so, good for you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Next item in business, item F, Grand County Visitors Bureau, John Leidy. For an appointment to the Grant County Visitors Bureau Board. Um, this is a two year term that will run through 2024. We'll continue to do uh, what this body has done in the past. We'll advertise the position and hopes to. Uh, receive any recommendations, uh, applications. At this point, uh, they are recommending somebody to be appointed to the Grant County Visitors Bureau. But I would recommend to this body to advertise the position and uh, an applicant at the next meeting. And do you have a timeline? Or what the end of applications have to be done? Even Monday before the next meeting. By the 13th. By the 13th. So if you're interested in serving uh, as the county's appointment to the Grant County Visitors Bureau, have your application in by the 13th to the auditor's office. Next item on the new business gas city development committee, uh, Mr. Rock. Uh, it's this body's appointment to the gas city development committee. Again, I think we should keep the trend. Uh, we'll advertise the position and approve it at the, the next meeting and the nominating committee would choose a candidate. So if you're interested in serving on the gas city development committee. I have your application by the 13th to the auditor's office. Uh, 
Uh, Mr. White contacted me yesterday. Moving on to item H, Highway Community Crossing Grant. Um, uh, the commissioners have already approved. Uh, this is a formality. Mr. White has requested that when we sign this letter of intent that any funding that he gets from community crossings that he'll be able to match within his funds. So it would be no additional dollars. It'd be dollars he already has in his funds, but he needs uh, the letter uh, that this body's willing to, to do the match and appropriation. It, uh, the letter says to whom it may concern the Board of Commissioners for Grant County and the Grant County Council respectfully submit this financial commitment letter as part of the county's application for the community crossing matching grant. By utilizing local funds, Grant County will provide the necessary funding to supplement the community crossing matching grant and will be responsible for any and all project costs not covered by the matching grant. Uh, Grant County has one small bridge project that we would like to complete partnering with the community crossing and grant program. We hope to get these projects accomplished. So I just need a motion uh, to approve the matching grant. So moved. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Connor and a second from Mr. Scott to approve the community crossing grant uh, partnership. Any other questions or comments? Public input. Uh, roll call, please. Scott. Aye. Connor. Aye. Hicks. Aye. Warbach. Aye. Polling. Yes. Limiting. Aye. Middlesworth. Yes. Motion carries. <laughs> like that concludes all the new business. Moving on to old business. We have an appointment to the local alcohol and tobacco board. This time, and I'll turn it over to the committee chairman, Mr. Lemming. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we have our appointment, uh, Liz Wright, and she's held that for two years. And we had a, a new applicant this year, uh, Mr. Dean Small. I don't know if he's here or not, but he also works for the county. And since he does that um, type of work, we as our group, we feel that it'd be appropriate to recommit Liz Wright to that appointment, just so we don't have a conflict of interest, as what we've talked about mostly tonight. So that would be our recommendation. Is there a motion? So I make a motion to approve Liz Wright. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Warbach, a second from Mr. Poling to approve the uh, reappointment of Liz Wright to the uh, local alcohol and tobacco board. Any other questions or comments from the members? Uh, public input. Uh, roll call, please. Scott. Aye. Connor. Aye. Hicks. Yes. Warbach. Aye. Poling. Yes. Lenny. Aye. Middlesbrough. Yes. Motion carries. The next item under old business county treasurer Tiffany Griffith with uh, consideration of amendment uh, ordinance to establish processing fees for mobile home transfers and moving permits. As you recall, our last meeting, we approved an ordinance. There were some errors, uh, spelling errors, I believe, on the ordinance. <clears throat> Um, that uh, was caught later by the commissioner's attorney. So this ordinance is before us again. <laughs> However, uh, they decided to go ahead and change the ordinance number to, to this year, 1-2023. As far as the red line copy, I'm not real sure. Uh, do you recall, Angie, what was changed? Um, it was that uh, one of the IC codes was wrong and one was completely left off. Okay. There a motion. So this is the new one that been approved by the commission. And I have the signed copy uh, from the commissioners are to approve it and then it'll be passed around this evening for their signatures as well. Next motion to approve the amended ordinance. Second. 
I have a motion from Mr. Connor, a second from Mr. Lindy to approve ordinance number 1 2023. It's the amended ordinance of the stash establishment. Establishment of processing fees for mobile home transfers and moving permits by Grant County Treasurer. Any other questions or comments from the members? Public input. A roll call, please. Scott. Aye. Connor. Aye. Hicks. Yes. Warbach. Aye. Bowling. Yes. Lemming. Aye. Yes. Motion carries. I'll pass this around so you can sign up. I think I have the original. I think I do. No. She's got the one. Right. I think they're calling copies. Are they call her copies? Yeah. yeah, that would be it. This is the Angie Jarvis area. <laughs> <laughs> right, Seven years. Years. <laughs> Six Are there any committee reports? No committee reports. It's that time of year that we start uh, thinking about the members committee assignments. I know Mr. Poling uh, has uh, gave notice that he would not like to serve at the Economic Growth Council. And so that was up for an appointment. Mr. Lemming, are you interested in serving on the Growth Council? I think right now, I don't have the paper in front of me, uh, Mr. Hicks, you served uh, on the EMA Advisory yeah. Board as well as the area plan. And Mr. Lemming serves on the nomination committee as well as uh, the union negotiation committee. Give that to Chuck if you want to switch. What's that? The union negotiation committee. Cheers. And then Mr. Connors, the mm -hmm. legislator to raise on, which was not a four year appointment, I believe. You still on? I don't think I've ever had to do anything with it, to be honest. So I'll take that. I'll trade it. No, no, I want board loss. Mr. Morbach, also, you said served on the nomination committee. And what else do you serve on? Frank County Community Crooks. Mr. Scott, are you okay with your appointments? Yours, you serve on the heating negotiation commission. It's a pleasure of the president. He's like, I will be happy to. <laughs> so, yeah, just be chicken dinner. Be thinking about your committee assignments uh, for next year. If you have any questions or you want to change uh, whatever your assignments are, we uh, send them out again. I'll send them out again. But I had them see now. I can't find them. Um, our next regular meeting. Is Wednesday, February the 15th. Anybody else have anything? Y'all allow public comment this evening? We'll allow, uh, we'll do five minutes. What time is it? We'll allow five minutes. Uh, state your name and number of explainers. I live in Jonesboro, Indiana. I'm the citizen that represents Jonesboro on the APC and the BVA. I'd like to clarify some stuff that you guys said here earlier. We are not fighting with the commission. What we are doing is looking at the ordinance, seeing if it follows IC code or the wrong. I just was the last past president who just got off. And the reason we're doing that, because we don't want it down the line that 
Okay, the Lord just comes to us. The Lord company comes in. Now somebody out in the club can find something wrong, and we get sued for a hundred thousand dollars. I don't think you guys would want us to come in and say we're going to need fifty thousand dollars now for filing this lawsuit. All we're doing is asking to look at the IC codes and make sure everything in that ordinance is so it's not a fight, you know, between it. People have brought up issues on IC codes and different things that we want to know if we're right or wrong. Because I know as I was being president, there was other problems here and there. And I am. Show me the IC code or show me a legal document where this is right. And you can't show me how we know. And all of a sudden somebody finds it and we get sued. All we want to do is cover our butt. And if there is a mistake in it, Ask the commissioners nicely, will you please change them? But otherwise, as a board member, if we leave it the way it is and it comes back to me, I'm going to have to say throw them, throw them back. We don't want to look at them. We don't know if it's right or wrong. That's my opinion. I don't want to know things are either right or wrong by state code and legal code. And that's what we're here tonight to ask them for. Well, we can find out if you guys said no. So if it comes back to me, I'm going to have to say I cannot set, set I cannot vote on it. Thank you. So if you want to make economic better in Grant County, you would find out if the ordinance is right by the state code. Thank you. I just have one simple question. Go ahead. Good answer yes or no. I appreciate it. <laughs> Are you in favor of solar? I'm 50 50. I'm 50 50 on it. You know, I'm 50%. If you do it a certain way, and, and if business wants it, General Motors, Dollar General, certain people like Gas City, they're not part of us. But you know, the way they're doing it, you know, I don't mind do that, but the way they've been going in some of these counties, I look at it this way. And as a citizen, how would I walk around my, and then I got to look way to business and people. To make a happy meeting. You guys got to do the same thing. You got to come to a happy meeting with business and what's fair and fair. And that's what I've tried to do since I've been on the BZA and the ABC. And that's what I want to see as a past president is make sure that we do that. I always force and told Brian, is this IC code? Is this true? We have problems. I want to know. And that's what we appreciate the egg and the egg PC want to know. But tonight we didn't give the opportunity to go find out if the order is right. So I, I, I just ask yes or no. Exactly. I think board yes. member might have to say that's all I, I can't vote before. on that. Uh, that Hartman, fair amount in the end. Uh, yeah. Different subject. Uh, watching the December meeting on WebEx and the treasurer came before this body and uh, said some things like there was a, a state auditor uh, checking accounts and that she found some problems, I believe. And there was different amounts mentioned and were you asked to spend money, $273,000 or something like that to settle? Problem and could you clarify that? I I didn't quite understand everything that was going on and what she was saying was a little disturbing. She said at one time, I don't know where the money went. I know we all make mistakes and we're going to probably continue to make mistakes, but I didn't I didn't I didn't understand everything that was going on. I'd be the first to admit that, but I had questions that when that meeting was over was okay. What's your plan going forward that that doesn't happen again? And are you hiring so, someone to check this out as to what <clears throat> happened in the past? Normally, at the end of the meetings, we really don't, you know, uh, make comments back toward uh, those making well, comments. But I, I will uh, answer the, and I don't speak for the treasurer. Mm -hmm. uh, that recommendation was from the state uh, board of accounts, and obviously that uh, been ongoing for some time that the auditor. Uh, was not balanced with the bank, not uh, the treasurer was not balanced with the bank. And it's what three treasures now, maybe four. 
Uh, so that was a recommendation by the state board of accounts to uh, clean the books, so to speak. So that, Andy, you want to describe the process of what was done? Oh, we had to write a check out of County General for the treasurer so that she could write it on a cash book so that it would um, come back to a more balanced number. Yeah, none of the members liked it. But it was a it was a recommendation from the, the state board of accounts to, to clean the books and obviously it's been years. So part of the balance is that was it, well, was that amount actually two hundred seventy three thousand? Uh, yeah, 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 something like that. That's why there've been elections and changes. Yeah, to answer your question, how to keep it from happening again, the answer is voters need to elect people that are competent to serve in their position of treasurer. To be very blunt and very yeah. honest. And we also, the treasurer's office has um, started using a new software. So should we be ready? That will solve it. But you did have to write a check for two hundred seventy-three thousand dollars. But that you gotta understand, that's about a carryover of ten years, maybe thirteen years. So, so you go back to each three or four different treasurers again, mm -hmm. and you had someone that embezzled money. You had somebody that we we had a system flaw that everything crashed. And got rebuilt. So, I mean, this has been something that's trying to been done. So, state board of accounts has been auditing us every other year, and those are things that happen. That this is just a way to fix the problem. And as Mr. Connor alluded to, state board of accounts comes in and checks all these things on every two to three year basis. We agree with you. It's very unfortunate that it happened. We don't know the answer, but that's the answer. Yeah, I don't know the answer. Is the answer. No, no, I don't think that that's the answer. If you've been to, and I'm not saying you should have been, but if you had attended all the meetings I've attended you, as a councilman, you would have heard the whole story of the colossal mess that we had to clean up because we had incompetent treasury. Frankly, books didn't balance, and eventually the hens come home to roost, and you got to clean up the mess. And that's what we did, and it's no fun. It's not palatable. They don't blame people for being mad. And that's, again, coming back to the we talked about further. That's why it's always a good thing to look at government and yeah. to keep an eye on government. How do, you, how do you know the auditor that came here was right? You mean the one from the State Board of Accounts? Yeah, that said you owed $273,000 when Mr. McWord sat there and thought it was a much smaller number. When well, he said, oh, I thought maybe it was 40,000. If there's a way of going over the head of the state board and counts, I'd like to know what it is. Your time's up. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The other public input the podium that state your name and your address. Ted, did you say my address? We Please, if you would, for the record. 3389 North, D00 West, Marion. I have two things to say. I've been coming here for a few years, and this is the first time I've ever been here that I've heard it. Is somebody complaining about spending taxpayer money? I wish I could hear that more often. I wasn't sure if you were mad at me or you were happy with me. Well, I'm not happy with you. I'm <laughs> We don't have to agree. I'm just saying, I've never heard you complain about spending taxpayers' money, but I like that. And for that gentleman there, I'm sorry, I don't know his name. He said, well, you, you wish you we could vote yes or no on the solar panels? Well, if you want to know, let's put it to a vote. Ask all these people here, do they want solar panels? Or we don't want them. Or let us all vote on it. Let the people who own the property vote on it. And then you guys could just sit here and say, well, that's what they don't want, or that's what they do want. Well, thank, thank you. you. Um, good evening. I'm Andy Ellis. I'm Fairmount, Indiana, 8320 East Jefferson, place to be exact. And um, sitting here listening to this, um, and we do appreciate you listening to us. Um, and we've been following this for quite some time. 
um, and it does re re relate to the solar. Um, I don't know that we can just kick the can down the road. I'm a little concerned in that regard because I think as we sit here tonight, and I stand here, I think we've got an ordinance, which means that there's a potential for applications um, to be put in place. And once there's applications in place, those are the rules that we're living by. So I think that we really need to get this resolved. Large concern by the community, as you can see, we had larger numbers earlier, but we're not here to fight. We're here to try to get this right. And we were trying to compromise the whole time to try to get this resolved so that we have something that people can live with. I support solar when it's done appropriately. There's a lot of places that you can put solar. But my main message today is your concern, Mr. Connor, about um, Spending taxpayer money, and I respect that. Obviously, I respect that. But I think I heard you say that the, the private sector that we should, should just pay for it ourselves. I think that's what I heard. I, I didn't mean to be understood that way, but but that, that's the way it came across. Is because when we talked about it, um, we were basically told that no, you don't want to go sue. What you want to do is try to get this right, and we we don't believe that the way that it was processed. And I try to to be a constituent and work with the community and work with the, the area planning commission in particular to try to get this resolved and found so we wouldn't be here tonight. But this is kind of where we found ourselves. So we were looking for help. We were looking for help before we got ourselves in the deep end of the pool and couldn't swim out of it. As, as we sit here today, we have an ordinance. I think that it's a legal document and I don't know that we know or you know that it's appropriate. So. We'd hoped that you would try to get to the bottom of it. And I think it's important to get somebody that has particular expertise in the area, as opposed to just whatever your county lawyer. And I think obviously, um, even if, with respect to Kyle, um, Kyle does not have a background necessarily in that, in zoning. So the, the thought the whole time was to try to get good, wise counsel. And I'm not sure we ever got it. So that's my message. We have an ordinance. I think we need to get this, this result. And I don't know that we know as a group, as a party here, that what we got in place is legal and it needs to come. So I appreciate your time. Thank you for your support. Thank you. <clears throat> is there any other public input? <clears throat> There's no other public input. Our next regular meeting is Wednesday, the February the 15th, same time, 6 o'clock.